Welcome to The Life Talk Show, sharing ideas for meaning, joy, and success with Randy Kay, Diana Hall, and Nikki Tombalides. And now, today's Life Talk Show. Hi, I'm Randy Kay, and I'm here with Diana Hall. This is a special edition of The Life Talk Show. Our topic today is called The Murder of Anastasios, a Modern Greek Tragedy. Anastasios is the father of our very own co-host, Nikki Tombalides, and this is a very emotional and personal story about Nikki and her dad and her decision to go public. This is the shocking ordeal of what happened in 2000 when Nikki received a call that her father had had a stroke. By the time she got to Greece, he had passed away, and she has reason to believe that he did not die of a stroke, but that he was actually murdered. All his paperwork is missing, and we're going to learn more about it today. So, hi, Nikki, and Diana and I are going to talk to you about this. Um, your father, Anastasios Tombalides, is a Greek expat. He was born in Russia, graduate of Cambridge, a retired executive from the National Iranian Oil Company for 30 years. He moved with his wife, your mom, to Athens, Greece in 1981. So, so can you tell us why the move to Greece and a bit about your family? Okay. This was after the revolution in Iran. My parents, as you mentioned uh, before, my dad worked for the oil company and the American hostage crisis, and uh, it was, life was difficult there, and they decided for the first time for my father to come and live in Greece. And uh, that's uh, that's how they end up coming to, in uh, 1981, to live in Greece. Okay, and a bit about your family, uh, your mom's name, and the names of you and your siblings? Uh, my mom, her nickname is Aliki, and my brother, I have a brother who's older than me, and a sister that's uh, the oldest. My sister's name is Sophia, and my brother's is uh, Aries. Hi, Nikki. It's Diana. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Your story is really an amazing story, um, so thank you for sharing it with us. So can you tell us um, what happened in 2000 on June 16th? Yes, I received a call on, th it was a Thursday, I remember it clearly, it was around uh, four, 5 o'clock. I received a call from Greece from a family friend that my father had a stroke and I need to go right away. So what I did is I got my ticket and I went to Greece. When I arrived, uh, they informed me that my father had passed and um, I asked how did this happen and they mentioned that he had a stroke and we went through the funeral and I came back home. Until four or five months after his death, I found out that he died from a, a fall from a height uh, based on his death certificate. So it's my understanding that you believe that your father was murdered. So what brought you to that? A few things. Uh, when I found out that he died from a fall from a height, I, I was shocked. And I researched that. And I myself went with a friend to Greece. And we found out that... At 10 o'clock, the police was called, and at 12.05, he was thrown overboard. So we obtained the autopsy report, the case file, and we translated all the documents, and we brought them to Dr. Henry Lee, the police commissioner here in Connecticut, and the police commissioner in New York at the time, Bernard Carrick, and Commissioner Spada here in uh, Connecticut helped research the case, and they found out that indeed something happened and he didn't die of natural causes. So you feel you were lied to? Yes. Wow. And this was 16 years ago. So in that time, you traveled to Greece twice after your father's funeral, and you gathered a lot of vital information about his death. So I know you walked in here with boxes of paperwork and said there was more where you live. So what did you find, and did anybody help you in your search for the truth? That's a very good question, Randy, and uh, I can't thank enough the people in the United States that they assisted me from Senator Lieberman at the time, Commissioner Spada, Colonel Timothy Berry, Dr. Henry Lee, the forensic expert, Detective David Negron from the Homicide Detective in the Bronx in New York, and Bernard Carey. So many people here helped me, the FBI. David Rue from the FBI and assisted me, advised me. But unfortunately, this is why I'm doing this today. I'm asking people in Greece to come forward and uh, to open this case and find out what happened to my father and what happened to his will and his trust. 
because I know he registered those documents with the Greek government. And I exhausted all avenues. I, I cannot afford attorneys anymore. I finished with five attorneys. I literally, it devastated me financially and emotionally this case. So just to, to sum up where we are right now. So you, your belief is, and what you're trying to prove, is that your father was indeed murdered. He did not die of a stroke. And you have, in fact, reconstructed a timeline, which we don't have time to share today, but of what you believe and people have told you happened that night when he died. And so you briefly mentioned, but just to clarify, what happened when you tried to settle his will right after his death? What were you told? Oh, that there is no will. My father, uh, as you mentioned previously, he is a, a, an economist that he was meticulous with his paperwork. And he does mention in a letter that you see here that he had made a will. And together with my nephew, we are the two people to inherit him. And um, he made provisions for my mother. But basically, the two of us were the only two people to inherit him. And the will is missing. So where is his money now? Who The liquid assets are missing. The accounts were closed the day after my father's funeral, That an account that was under my mom and the, under my name. These are foreign currency accounts. So these accounts were closed the, the day after my father's funeral. As concerning the property, apparently it looks like it was all transferred to my siblings. I don't even know how this happened. So, Nikki, your father's death was in 2000, so 16 years later. You talk about uh, Greece and its high corruption. So what has changed from 2000 to now? Uh, I hope something changed. The government changed. So I hope that will motivate people. If people listening to this interview will get on the phone and call Senator Blumenthal and ask him to intervene with the Greek government and have them l look at this case and see what happened to my father and what happened to his property and where is his will because he registered his will and he his trust. And my father, as I said before, he was very meticulous with his paperwork. Okay, wow, this sounds like, so it's an, it's an open possible murder case, it's missing assets, and it's a heartbroken daughter. What did you lose from this event, Nikki? Oh, my God. <laughs> I think I lost, above all, I think I did. I lost my father, and my father lost his life. I think that's the most important thing just to say at this time. It was an untimely death that my father died. And basically, you want answers and you want closure. Yeah. How did you come out of this? 16 years later, and I, you know, I think an open wound is the hardest to heal, and clearly this is an open wound with all these unanswered questions. So uh, you've already thanked many people. So just can you share you know, where you are now emotionally and what you're doing to try to come out of this tragedy? Well, I, I'm going to say that trying to get out of this, it it's, has not been easy, but uh, I, I have so many people to thank, all my friends. But above all, I want to thank from all people, my ex-husband and his family. He's remarried to a, with a beautiful wife and child, but he stood by my side and he replaced my family out of this tragedy. He stood by my side and everybody else. And above all, I want to thank my father because uh, he gives me strength every day, knowing that he loved me so much. So, Nikki, this, this story really is absolutely heartbreaking. And I know you're looking for some closure to this. And so what can the people listening do to help you in your quest? We're going to be posting interview online on our website, the Life Talk Show's website, and on all social media outlets. But what can people do? Thank you so much for asking, Diane. I would like uh, people to share this post uh, on Facebook or any other way that they can. And also every single person that's listening to this to contact Senator Blumenthal, RichardBlumenthal.com and uh, ask him to help Nikki find an answer to her father's tragic death. And also for anybody, anybody listening 
in Greece to help us by coming forward with any information you need. Σας παρακαλώ να μας δώσετε ό,τι πληροφορίες θέλετε για τον πατέρα μου, Αναστάσιο τον Πουλίδη. Ευχαριστώ πολύ. Nikki, thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. And Diana, thank you as always for co-hosting. I want to thank our underwriters, Gracious Interiors by Diana, Penguin's Best Housekeeping Service, for their support. Nikki is also the published author of a children's book on how to keep it clean, titled It's a Clean Green World, The World Travels of Takis and Mimi, and that is dedicated to her father, whose nickname was Takis. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you so much for listening to the Life Talk Show. This is a very special edition. And as always, we we end with just some final little words from each of us. And I would say an open wound is the hardest to heal. So we're trying to help Nikki heal. Diana, any any special little proverb that helps?